Good morning, dear colleagues and friends. I am uh, Luc Zelderlo, Secretary General of uh, ESPD. ESPD is a European network of support services for persons uh, with disabilities. Uh, and I would like to uh, welcome you at this uh, all-in um, closing, pr closing project webinar. Uh, all-in, isn't that a fantastic project name? In times of division, hate speech and populism, we work on a project all in, and that is great, I think. It is a statement uh, in his own. Welcome at this uh, webinar. Before officially opening uh, the event, some technical information. The webinar is recorded, and of course, uh, we will make that available uh, afterwards through the uh, website and means we have. There is also the possibility to have uh, real-time English subtitles, and you can activate that by clicking on the closed captioning button on the uh, control bar. We um, mute your microphone, and this is to ensure the quality of uh, the session. For questions, please use the Q&A button on the control bar, and if you want to share comments, remarks, uh, feel free to use the chat box. Uh, you can find all this on the control bar. Dear colleagues, welcome at uh, this uh, event. Of course, we would have preferred to have an in-person uh, meeting, but due to COVID-19, this is uh, not possible. Let's make the best out of it. Let's exchange ideas and let's try to learn from one another. This is a closing event of an uh, Erasmus Plus project, All In, incredible practitioners to empower adults with disabilities through education, employment, and social entrepreneurship. What a fantastic uh, name. This project aims at improving the quality of support provided by adult education practitioners, trainers, support people, through the development of different uh, resources which can be adapted to the needs of persons with disabilities, adults with disabilities. Indeed, uh, the narrative, uh, the real foundation of this project is the conviction that only empowered staff can empower people. So we really wanted to, uh, through this project, invest in staff that is able to uh, deliver high quality education by indeed having the needed uh, resources uh, available, individualized uh, uh, approaches also uh, we wanted to develop through this uh, project. This event will uh, introduce uh, innovative and practical resources developed by the uh, partnership. We will also share some promising practices uh, in, this, in this field of uh, adult education and employment of persons with disabilities. And last but not least, we will also discuss the way forward uh, on how to uh, make sure that indeed the decision makers uh, at European Union level and at national level follow the right track uh, to uh, indeed uh, make the ambition of this project a reality. Again, welcome at this event. We have uh, fantastic practitioners with us, researchers and project partners. So I'm sure that it will be a great uh, event. And now I uh, hand over to Adriana, who was in charge of this project uh, in uh, ESPD. Adriana, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Luke, for this introduction. Um, also, I would like to welcome uh, all speakers and participants to today's event from my side as well. And uh, we really hope that in the next uh, one hour and uh, 40 minutes uh, that you will learn about um, interesting resources that we produced in the project. And uh, we hope that this will be useful and you will be able to use them also in your future work in supporting persons with disabilities in training and um, transition to employment. Um, indeed, as uh, Luke uh, already mentioned, uh, the rationale of the project uh, started um, within the key objective of contributing to further developing the access of uh, learners uh, with disabilities to uh, inclusive education and training, training opportunities. 
Um, this is something that uh, a key right that is stipulated in the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Um, and, uh, and indeed, the ultimate vision for um, inclusive, inclusive education systems is to ensure that all learners of all ages are provided with meaningful, high-quality educational opportunities in their local communities together with their peers and their friends. This uh, requires that state parties, uh, signatories of uh, the UN Convention, uh, take the necessary means to ensure that all legal, physical, and organizational barriers um, are removed. Um, so anything that can prevent persons with disabilities from accessing such um, learning opportunities throughout their lives. This includes, among others, um, adequate adaptation of school infrastructures, of curricula, of teaching methods, but also means supporting um, teachers, staff, all those that are involved in the education uh, process of persons with disabilities. Um, so this requires that policymakers and national authorities uh, take appropriate measures to employ teachers, including teachers with disabilities who are qualified in using uh, inclusive teaching resources and to train professionals and staff who work at all levels of education. This is the vision. The reality is slightly different across uh, countries in the EU and the meaningful participation in mainstream ad adult education and lifelong learning programs is still far from being the reality for many learners with disabilities. So within this reality, um, the project uh, identified two key barriers that um, wanted to be tackled. And that are, uh, those are the lack of adequate training of practitioners working in mainstream educational and training structures, and the lack of flexible and individualized educational and training resources for persons with disabilities. Um, indeed, the project was co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program, uh, a cooperation for um, the key action cooperation for innovation and exchange of good practices. It was a strategic partnership for adult education. The project was started in September 2018 and will finalize uh, this year at the end of November. So, the only aims were um, within the context that I just presented were to um, better equip practitioners from the field of adult education and employment with new skills and competences. manual, which is a support manual for uh, different stakeholders um, supporting persons with disabilities in accessing uh, employment. We've produced a very interesting and innovative uh, online game, which is called Ready for Impact, uh, which uh, can be used for practitioners to, to, to uh, teach uh, persons with disabilities, but also anybody about what is a social enterprise and how can this be started. We produced also an HR disability tool, which is in fact a collection of best practices uh, from the field of assistive technology uh, in education and employment. And last uh, but not least, we've also uh, launched a manifesto, um, help practitioners to succeed in achieving inclusive adult education, which contains policy recommendations based on a research which was done in three countries. So who is only? Uh, we were uh, five organizations from um, three, four different countries. Um, the coordinator um, uh, was uh, Federation for Accessibility from Romania. Unfortunately, um, the coordinator was not, was not able to attend today's event as uh, they're also busy organizing uh, promotional events uh, in Romania. Uh, then we had, uh, as a partner, the National Confeder Confederation of Disabled People from Greece, CESUR Formation from Spain, the Association of Consultants and Experts in Social Economy from Romania, and us, ESVD. 
And um, I will, as I mentioned, the fact that uh, the coordinator unfortunately was not able to join uh, today's event. Um, I would, uh, it will also be me introducing uh, the first output uh, produced by the project which was uh, led by uh, the Federation of Accessibility in Romania in cooperation with all the project partners. So I have to apologize that you will be hearing a bit more from my side today. Um, and I will also be moderating the session. So I hope that I will not bore you. <laughs> so um, the first resource produced by the project, um, as I mentioned, was um, a resource bank. Uh, which uh, we entitled um, How to Develop Inclusive Adult Education. This contains fi five practical uh, open educational resources, which aim to support practitioners design and implement customized programs for adults with disabilities through inclusive education and personalized learning. Um, Hopefully, it will allow practitioners to be prepared for managing inclusive settings as well as differences among adult learners. And it will uh, hopefully will address specific needs of learners and better tackle the complex dimensions of inclusion. Um, the first resource produced within this uh, package is uh, a guide on um, how to apply human-centered design thinking to support adults with disabilities in accessing the labor market. Um, it contains, um, it starts from the theoretical uh, side of what is human design thinking methodology and how we can be uh, applied in uh, preparing persons with disabilities uh, to enter the labor market. So it contains uh, interactive uh, type of exercises on how um, Practitioners can support uh, persons with disabilities to develop a career planning process, prepare for an interview, and write uh, a CV and all uh, such things that are involved in, in um, um, preparing for a job. Um, the um, training, we, we actually developed a training uh, based on this guide, and this training was piloted uh, last year in Athens uh, in April. Um, and brought together um, practitioners and persons with disabilities from across Europe. Um, and then later on, each partner um, has um, further piloted, uh, implemented uh, uh, the training in their own countries. So um, based on these trainings, uh, we collected additional feedback and further fine-tuned this guide. The second resource um, is an inclusion needs analysis kit. And the tools uh, within this kit uh, can be used to assess current working methods, services, and programs, and identify areas of work which should be better redefined in order to enhance inclusion and better training support for persons with disabilities. The tools uh, can also help practitioners uh, identify and define potential new projects or initiatives that could address the gaps and difficulties of disabled adults in terms of education, training, and inclusion on the labor market. The third resource is a toolkit on empathy, emotional, and social intelligence. And uh, these um, soft skills were identified, were identified within the project as essential soft skills that are needed uh, in a working environment, and it contains strategies, tools, games, and emotion boosting exercises, which can be used by practitioners in working with persons with intellectual disabilities. The fourth uh, resource um, is a practical guide on different intelligences and learning styles. Again, it contains the theoretical part, but also practical um, um, chapter, which contains different strategies and tools and games, which can be applied by trainers to, um, um, for, so they can focus on the different type of intelligence and learning styles of, of uh, their learners. And so last but not least, uh, the fifth resource uh, within this package is uh, entitled Impact for Disabled Adult Education. And uh, this, it contains um, one case study of innovative partnerships uh, from each partner country, country uh, in terms of uh, successful partnerships between different stakeholders 
uh, involved in adult education, uh, be it service providers, authorities, and employers. Um, and uh, so with the purpose of um, achieving uh, increased access of um, persons with disabilities to adult education and uh, especially in mainstream adult education. And um, actually, we're very happy to, to have today um, one of the best practices which has been collected by us, by AASPB. And uh, this is um, the example of CDO Inclusive, which was a project uh, developed with different partners from Flanders in Belgium, including MPI Hospital. Um, so I would like to give the floor to Raf Hessenbergen. Uh, who will introduce uh, this promising practice to you. Uh, so, Ralph, you have the floor and you have five minutes. Uh, ten minutes, sorry. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'll start by sharing my screen. Share. Okay. Okay. Hope you see this. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, as uh, Adriana announced me, I am Raf Hensbergen. I'm uh, a job coach from MBE Ostro in Belgium. Um, and I had the honor to be a part of a, a nice project in Belgium called CVO Inclusive. Um, CVO Inclusive was or, or is an ESF project aimed at inclusive adult education for people with intellectual disabilities. Um, to, show what it's all about, I uh, use two quotes that uh, came up during the, the project. And these two quotes tell us what education, adult education can mean for people with an intellectual disability. Um, I take lessons in adult education just like my brother and can I apply uh, at a restaurant with a partial certificate. Um, these two quotes tell us uh, what things can mean. For example, there's a part about following education on the campus, just like the brother or sister or anyone else. And the second part is having a piece of paper in their hands, stating that they can do what they can do so that they have proof of this when they apply for a job. Um, the project started out uh, of a partnership with expertise in various fields, like education, training and work, and also two centers for adult education in Belgium participated in this project. The starting point was just like the all-in project and the UN Convention on the Rights for Persons with a Disability. Um, and our goal was to strengthen people with an intellectual disability so that they have more opportunities to like work. And we used the methods um, by developing a new service and making adult education more accessible for people with an intellectual disability. Um, we used a process and a plan of action like those things go in a project. The first step was um, we used an experience map and personas. Um, this was a fascinating exercise to map out the project of personas. I think in this case it was Emily with the partners, which steps need to be taken, who's involved, actions and roles, dilemmas and so on. And then check whether this, whether this story is still true for other personas as well. We talked about norms, values, and learned to look with inclusive glasses, which was sometimes a process because taking care of things is often is very strongly anchored in, in our way of thinking. So we had to change our way of thinking. Um, in following, um, we started with two focus groups. Um, in the first focus group, we sat together with teachers. Um, um, we explored what was already happening in the centers for adult education, what the teachers think of the idea of inclusive adult education, how do they deal with diversity, which working methods are used, etc. And on the second hand, we also had focus group with about 20 adults with an intellectual disability, people who were already working or students in special education and former students in uh, inclusive secondary education. We asked if they still would like to go to school and what they would like to learn. And we also asked them what, in their opinion, is a good teacher. Um, then based on these findings um, and on the findings we, we found in uh, literature, uh, we created a training course for teachers to teach the teachers in three half day sessions with homework assignments. So they, they got homework again. 
And we also involved a panel with people uh, with an intellectual disability in this training. Um, after this training, we started a trial project and a pilot study. We um, introduced uh, participants with an intellectual disability in training courses. They were all first supported by a coach, but um, we noticed that there was quite quickly a spontaneous interaction with, with their fellow students. So the support could be phased out um, and those fellow students played a role in the support needed by, uh, for, for example, uh, taking pictures before the course or accompanying them to the taxi afterwards or, or even bicycle pooling to get to the school and back and things like that. Um, now I'll give you some results and practical experience. So in the first pilot we uh, had Ria. Maria was already working as an admin, administrative worker for about 30, 30 years in our local tourist office. And she had an interesting for cooking, but more as a hobby. Um, then she started the training course to be an assistant chef. And now after this course, she works in addition to her job as an administrative assistant, as an assistant cook in a local or bar in a local restaurant. So this was a case of retraining. She was uh, all focused on uh, administ administrative uh, tasks. And now she, in addition to that, she's a, she's a cook as well. Uh, in the second pilot, we started with Frans. Uh, Frans, a long time ago, uh, he Um, but she has a special interest in following courses. She can learn new stuff. She's also always in the, in the first row. Um, and she loves to, to help out in the kitchen at home. So she started a cooking course called International Classics. That was a very spicy course. Um, and during this course, she did an internship. Um, and this internship was such, such a success that she is still working at the place she did her internship now. So she had a new orientation about what she could um, do. Then there was Yuri as well. Yuri already worked in a restaurant in Spain and he loved to cook. But at the start of the, as he started the basic cooking course, at the start of this course, he didn't have a daily schedule. Um, and he did an internship for this uh, course in a school, but he did not complete this course. But now he started another cooking course and we are hoping that he can complete this course maybe and then we'll see what happens for Yuri. Um, then we also have Annalene. Annalene has been working uh, in a large kitchen in a school, but she's also in her free time. She's a monitor at a youth movement um, and she entered a healthcare professional course in the module of logistic skills. And now she's working in a residential care center in addition to her work at the school. And Annalene even started the next module of this training course. So she's still um, going on on developing her skills as a healthcare professional. Um, this experience, we all put it together in a roadmap, which gives 15 steps. It's something that um, centers for um, adult education can use if they think uh, about making their more inclusive. We have a roadmap for them in which uh, supports them in every step of this road. And in every step you see there are tips and guidelines from out of this project. There are also tips about um, which what organizations you can work together, who can help you. You want to teach your teachers, um, how can you organize stuff like that. But even if very practical thing, if, if uh, someone starts a course, what happens on the first day? Um, why should there be an internship uh, in this course? Yes, no, and stuff like that. And what about examinations, the certificates? And then afterwards, um, how can this be a stepping stone, a stone towards uh, work? Um, I don't know how my 10 minutes are at this moment, but I. When good. Have two minutes. <laughs> All right, perfect. So I can still say if there are any comments or questions or if you want to learn something more about this project, 
you can send me an email or even uh, Joel Dams. Joel Dams is actually the, the founder, the, the inspiration for this project. And she's here in the audience as well. Can you imagine the kind of stress I'm having right now? But you can, uh, you can contact her as well if you have any need for more information about this. Okay, that was it. Thank you very much, Rafa. You shouldn't be stressed in some ways. And uh, suddenly I feel a bit hungry with the mentioning of so many cooking classes. So you're also the international <laughs> yes. classic, the spicy course. <laughs> yes, we in there. Indeed. Uh, thank you very much for uh, the details you provided. I think it was a very interesting project and especially the fact that a roadmap, a practical roadmap was produced within the project. I think it's a very useful um, guide toolkit for practitioners to use in, uh, on making their uh, training institutions more um, inclusive. I would like to um, inform the participants that we will have a um, 10 minutes q and session later on. So uh, please think about any questions you may have for Ralph, uh, as um, you can take advantage of his presence here or otherwise, of course, you can contact him via the emails that he provided you. So yeah, thank you very much. Now I will pass the floor on to me again, um, because I will represent another project partner who again was not uh, able to uh, join us today um, from Romania. That is the Association of uh, Consultants and Experts in Social Economy uh, from uh, Romania, as I mentioned. Uh, I will quickly share my screen. Oh, sorry that you're seeing the calculator. Um, okay. And uh, this uh, is a product which was, um, um, as mentioned, coordinated by this organization from Romania. It's ready for it's the Ready for Labor Market Manual, preparing adults with disabilities for employment. And um, it's a toolkit for formal and non-informal training institutions. Um, aimed to incorporate soft and entrepreneurial skills as transversal and transferable competencies into their programs for persons with disabilities. So the toolkit um, can be seen as a starting point, a flexible uh, type of guide um, for um, in training institutions um, to use um, to develop further strategies which can be adapted and evaluated within their uh, purposes and their objectives. So uh, it is a manual that is mainly directed towards adult education practitioners, um, such as educators, trainers, mentors, vocational counselors, or any other experts to support people with intellectual disabilities to respond to the changing requirements of the labor market in terms of what are the required soft and entrepreneurial skills to be successful. Uh, how is this uh, manual organized? Um, it is a very vast manual, so it contains many, many interesting and practical resources, and it's uh, structured within two packs. Uh, the first pack uh, focuses on soft skills, and it contains, as I've mentioned, practical models and support tools for personal and professional development of adults with disabilities to be better prepared for uh, the work market. And the second pack focuses on entrepreneurial skills, again, with practical models and support tools for stimulating an entrepreneurial mindset and skills of adults with disabilities so they can become change makers in their communities. Uh, regarding the first pack, um, the soft skill, skills within this manuals, uh, manual were uh, understood as uh, the type of knowledge and attitudes and abilities that are required to handle and uh, contribute to different areas of a person's life, be it personal, social, and professional. Acquiring this type of competences um, are seen uh, to um, contribute to increasing the employability of adults with persons adults with disabilities and the impact that it has on their social inclusion in terms of achieving uh, personal development and improving their professional life. And it contains um, three of the most um, important skills uh, which we identified as essential to have on the labor market and those are problem solving, positive attitude and teamwork. 
The second pack um, is, um, focuses on entrepreneurial skills. Um, here, entrepreneurial skills um, are not related to a specific occupation, discipline, or qualification. Um, an attempt of a formal description to characterize uh, what entrepreneurial skills are might be that uh, it's the ability to have self-belief, to be bold, to have the tenacity, to be passionate, to have empathy um, and be open-minded uh, so that you can take expert advice to, to um, develop something uh, innovative and to be able to uh, recognize opportunity uh when you see it so uh the pack contains um three of what again we identified as the most important entrepreneurial skills um and those are passion self-confidence and open mindfulness so we uh identify this as important for skills to have for self-employment but also for responding to the changing labor market demands and for encouraging uh, disabled adults to find new ideas and ways of doing things as change makers in their communities. And I would like to quickly guide you um, towards the guide. Um, I hope you can see my screen. Um, this, so the manual itself, uh, you can find it here and uh, then um, the different packs that we produced with the different um, soft skills that I mentioned and then the entrepreneurial skills and it contains exercises which are um, also on PowerPoint so there are many many interesting things that you can you can uh, you can find in here so feel free to to further explore it as uh, uh, the partners have done uh, a great job and putting together uh, many, many exercises that uh, are very useful, we believe, in um, helping developing such, such skills. Um, okay, I will return to my presentation. And um, we have a few tips for practitioners on how to develop inclusive training strategies while using the ma uh, this manual, but also any type of inclusive uh, practices. And these are, um, it's important to, to get people with disabilities to engage uh, in addition to just learning. So it's not just about passive learning. Um, it's important to uh, do different type of exercises such as group exercise and exercises uh, using a role play type of activity, uh, creating lessons that engage different learning styles in a variety of ways which allow all learners to access and practice their own skills. Repetition is key. So it's important that trainers um, are as creative as possible when uh, they repeat concepts and emphasize a point. So um, it's important that um, a concept uh, is explained, if it's not understood, uh, it's explained from a different point of view uh, by using a different type of exercise. Um, show excitement, excitement can be very contagious. So you, it's important to show and demonstrate honesty, authenticity, and excitement because this can inspire people and this can be also brought, taken on board by, by, by learners. Instill confidence, um, have high expectations for all and help uh, everybody realize uh, their own potential by supporting them to become independent decision makers for their own personal and professional uh, future. Take time to get to know the learners. Uh, the trainer should um, have the patience to, to talk with the learners and be honest about their strengths and weaknesses. Um, also, um, instill, well, uh, practice co-production in the sense that um, listen to what the learners think is best for them and might work best in their training. Um, as, as this will uh, facilitate success. So important to learn, uh, important message is that uh, one size does not fit all. Step out of your preferred uh, method of teaching. Um, so to meet the needs of all learners, the trainers should try to give uh, up 
on their personal comfort zone. So uh, a variety of instructional approaches should, should be used, discussions, PowerPoint presentations, um, different type of experiments, exercises, and if needed, assistive technology. So these packs, uh, which I introduced, are designed to provide a variety of training opportunities, which can be uh, adapted. And uh, last but not least, provide accommodations. So whatever teaching or training strategies are put into place, um, there will always be, or there will, might be learners that uh, require accommodations. So making co accommodations benefits not just the persons, the person it's him, him or herself, but also the group participants. So this is the manual in a nutshell. Uh, we invite you to, to have a look at it. Um, and we really hope that uh, it will be useful for, for your work as well. Um, I will now, I, I was really on time. I will now um, give the floor to um, our project partner from uh, Spain, Cesur, um, uh, to Maria and Amalia who uh, have led uh, the intellectual output entitled Ready for Impact, uh, the game which was produced uh, to uh, demonstrate what social entrepreneurship is. So I would like to give the floor to Maria and uh, show, show us the wonderful game that we produced. Hi, hello everyone, good morning. Thank you very much, Adrian. Can I be here well? I think so, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much for your invitation to this webinar and your introduction. Um, as you have mentioned, we have been working like for now almost two years together with the rest of the partnership uh, in this very interesting and productive project. And it, it has been really, really uh, productive. I would like first introduce a little bit myself. My name is Maria Rubia and I work for the International Relations Department at TESUR. We are an institution dedicated to education, mainly to uh, vet and adult education. We are based in Spain and we have like more than 20 uh, vet centers. And from our international relations department, we work in several uh, Erasmus Plus project when we, um, in, when we are like expertise already in this kind of like um, European project where we have the opportunities to, to have this uh, sharing best practices um, experience with other partners as ES, um, ESPD. So I'm going to share uh, my screen now to uh, can you see my PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Um, and as Adriana mentioned before, during this um, during this project uh, in Fesur, with the rest of the partnership, we have developed in the frame of the all-in Erasmus Plus project this uh, intellectual output that is called Ready for Impact Board Game, which is an innovative pedagogical online game to be used by educators and mentors in their work with disabled adults for practical learning of how to start a social enterprise and to understand, it, it's a really like basic knowledge about uh, social economy. Uh, so the methodology of this output is, uh, it means to be an innovative pedagogical online game, which objectives is to allow participants to understand opportunities and difficulties, and also to practice the main phases in developing a social business and in a creative and a funny manner, because we know this can be a tough uh, subject to, to learn. So we, uh, through gamification, we try to do it like as uh, easy and as funny as, as possible. Uh, the target group for of this output are educators and mentors in their work with disabled adults. That's important because like sometimes um, it, it, it is important for us to, to clarify which is the target group of the output because they are not the disabled themselves. This like we could say like the final target group, but the main target group are educators and mentors. As Adriana has explained for other outputs, this project is based on creating tools for them. And the language of the, of the board game is English as, 
uh, the rest of the whole project. So the learning outcomes that we have tried to approach while designing and, and implementing this, this IO, it's in the first place to spread the importance of working for and contributing to the community and society. Also to create awareness about social enterprises and what, what, they, what they do as a work. Also helping to understand what makes social enterprises succeed or fail um, as any other kind of business. And the fourth place would be to encourage more people to start or be associated with social enterprises. And finally, to make students and learners socially conscious to work for the community and for other not so privileged people. Uh, so the faces uh, or the board game, as you're going to see uh, now, because I'm going to play a little bit demo, it, um, is made of four different faces or levels of the game. So in the first one, you can um, learn about finding and developing the social business idea is to understand what is a social enterprise itself. Um, the second um, level of the game uh, would uh, teach you how to make a, so a business plan is to understand how to start the social enterprise from scratch and which are the main step and activities to be able to choose among the different social business models that we can find. Uh, the third uh, phase or level is called from plan to test, uh, where you can learn about the risks and obstacles that you can face while uh, setting up a, a business and specifically a social enterprise. And finally, uh, the last phase is called looking ahead and you will learn there how to be aware about the importance of self-sustainability of a social enterprise. Uh, the rules of the game, uh, because all games have a rule, it's it's really easy uh, because um, this is mainly a, a theoretical uh, content that has been gamified, but it's not a game itself. Um, nevertheless, of course, we have some rules. Um, the game ready for impact consists of inviting the player to take a tour through the different phases that I have just explained that are consistent that are considered to be necessary from theoretical and practical uh, point of view to create and start a social enterprise. As I have said, the game consists or is made of like through uh, four different phases or levels. And the game starts when the player has created his user in the board game. Now we are gonna see how. And uh, it starts in level one and it will continue uh, in for the um, different phases in a row. At the very beginning of the of the game, you will find a previous, like just a brief explanation to contextualize the project and this IO to the user and to guide him uh, through each phase and how to play, how to use like some technical uh, indications that you need to to uh, consume the um, the learning outcome itself, the the theoretical part. Uh, the access to this output, uh, uh, you will find the the game through a link, um, a direct link to the to the online game itself, but also through the All In Project official website that Adriana has shown uh, before. As uh, I think we are going to share our materials of this presentation with all participants. I have um, let, let both links here, uh, but here, ready for impact, click now. It will uh, link you to the, to the game itself. It's completely free, of course. It's online, so the only thing you need is... Um, uh, uh, internet access. Uh, can you see my screen now? And um, is the project uh, is a game in life? Uh, no, it's just your presentation. So oh. you might need to reshare your screen. Is it now? Uh, yeah, it's working now. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So here is the first uh, screen of the 
of the game where you can see the Erasmus Plus logo and the, the project logo all in because this has been uh, developed in the frame of an Erasmus Plus project and created by the consortium of the uh, all in project. When we start, it's also important uh, the the game has been wait hold on a second uh, okay so the project the game sorry has been uh, designed and created to be user friendly with people with visual impairment disabilities and with hearing disabilities so uh, it's red uh, here you have the two characters that uh, are going to, to guide you through the uh, how to create a social enterprise um, pathway. And that will let us know about um, how like the, the basic settings of the board game. Maria, you have one more minute, just you know, so you know. So it will basically like show you how it works. And then at this point of the, um, of the game, you are ready to, to start playing. So the first thing we need to do is to, to choose our character. For example, I'm going to choose the cat. And with the arrows and the mouse of your computer, you will able to monitor the, the movings of your characters. So I think it's like every time you take a pill, uh, you are gonna get uh, pieces of information about like basic knowledge on how to start a social enterprise and what social economy is. Okay. So it's kind of funny because it reminds you to a little, I don't know if you have ever played Mario Bros or something like that. Uh, which was like the main um, video games uh, in the 90s. Uh, so it's, it's kind of funny for the, for the tutors and the mentors themselves, uh, but it's really, really easy to use. As I've said before, it's not a video game, it's just a gamification of these uh, learning outcomes. Throw okay. through the main... I'm gonna, Maria, unfortunately the time is up. I'm gonna go fast. You can monitor your character. Maria, can you hear me? And once you get all the pieces of information through the pills that you have get with your characters, you will be able to... Oh, wait. Thank you, Amalia. I think she... Wait. Adriana, were you saying something? Yes, do you hear me now? Sorry? Do you hear me? <laughs> yes, now. Yeah, I just wanted to tell you that your time is up, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, thank you, thank you very much um, for demonstrating the game. Uh, we're also inviting all participants to have a look at it. I think it's, um, it's something uh, different, um, uh, something a bit more fun to use. Uh, so we're very, also very proud of this output. So uh, thank you for providing the details and for your work. On You're it. welcome. Anyways, if any user has any further uh, comment, it can always like, contact us through the contact email of the partnership. Um, we are glad to, to provide further information about the output. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, if you can, uh, I can can I ask you to stop sharing your screen. Uh, I would like to now uh, give the floor to Evelina Kalimani from uh, NCDP from Greece, um, who has uh, led uh, the intellectual output entitled Assistive Technology to Enhance Success in VAT Adult Education and Employment. It's an HR disability tool, uh, which uh, collects models of good practice on use of assistive technology in education and employment. Evelina, you have the floor. You have eight minutes. Okay. Good morning, Andrea. And thank you very much for, uh, for getting me on. First of all, I would like to, to share my screen, but... Uh,
you have the share screen button, uh, green button. Um, Okay, perhaps there is a problem here. Um, do you have uh, Do you have my presentation, Andriana? Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Okay. On On behalf of NCDPA, I would like to to thank you for your invitation. And really, I'm very, I'm very glad that during this difficult period, uh, we continue all together our action and activities. And of course, I would like to thank you all for the excellent cooperation uh, these uh, last two years. So, uh, dear co-partners, my and I'm a worker from National Confederation of Disabled People. Uh, National Confederation was the lead partner for this intellectual output for, due to its experience in the field of accessibility of persons with disabilities, but all partners contribute to action of information and examples, and really thank you for your precious support. Uh, so, National Confederation is an umbrella organization representing the disability movement. It is a non-profit It was funded in 1989 by organizations of persons with disabilities, crisis, and their families in order to copy with issues of common interest related to any kind of disability. It includes more than uh, 500 organizations and it has officially been recognized as a national partner of state dealing with uh, disability issues, promoting policies. It is a founding member of the European Disability Forum. Uh, and our mission to combat discrimination against persons with disabilities and chronic diseases and protect their constitutional and human rights as the rights of their families. Okay. Before we would like to present some important definitions about the intellectual output. So, uh, assistive technology is the application of organ knowledge and skills related to assistive products, including system and senses, and the killer any external product, device, equipment, uh, instruments, or software. Priority as those products that are highly needed, which are of absolute necessity and or improve an individual functioning. Uh, moreover, they need to be available at a price the community or the state can afford. Okay, it's in, what is the HR disability tool? Uh, the HR disability tool is a theoretical and practical text with virtual collection of examples, practices with disabilities using assistive technology for success and productivity in education, employment, and it is the tool could be used by HR managers they are counselors, educators, board mentors, employers. The innovation. HR disability tool is if because it puts emphasis on the use of technology so that different institutions and organizations create appropriate and flexible environment for adults with disabilities, source of education and employment. Examples and practices can be also adapted and used by schools to access for children with disabilities. The main objective is to provide education and guidance to the education center, employment agencies, companies, etc., 
so that they are able to enhance their accessibility and inclusion policies and initiatives, especially in the line of vision of the UNCR. To allow collection of evidence-based practices, promoting persons with disabilities in an educational and work setting. About the content, a tool includes a theoretical part about the URPD, the meaning and the importance of accessibility, assistive technology, and policies and initiatives. The tool includes also a virtual collection with contains 14 different relevant resources, seven on education and training setting, and seven on employment discussions to evidences and practices that belongs to the following categories. Development and use of technology for disabilities and the application of universal design in infrastructure, fit spaces, technology, goods and services. What were the eligibility criteria for the collection of evidence practice? Relevant education and employment of adults with disabilities, contribution to the educational or employment integration of persons with disabilities, contribution to social cohesion, promotion values such as uh, equality, criminal accessibility, risk human dignity, possibility for applicable different environments and in real life settings, innovation, sustainability, sectionality. Verena, you have one more minute, I'm sorry. Okay, so in the next slide, you can see uh, a table about, uh, on the one half, education settings and on the other employment settings so you uh, you can find uh, more information uh, and it about virtual collection in the final uh, uh, in the final um, uh, version of the tool and of course, if you have any question or you need more specific information, you could send me an email. Here is my email and other information about our grant organization. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Evelina, for introducing this uh, very interesting uh, a tool that we produce. So um, indeed, we are still uh, the final version of the tool will be uploaded soon, and uh, we uh, you can uh, find it on the project website. Um, I would like now to give the floor to uh, Lieven Lustwit. I'm sorry, I can't really pronounce her name correctly. From Lichtwerk uh, from Belgium. Actually, um, Lichtwerk was selected as a promising practice. Um, included in this uh, in this guide, and it's uh, on the use of technology to increase access of persons with disabilities in the open labor market. You have the floor, Ivan. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you, Adrian, and good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you all see my screen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, great. It's okay. So, let me first say something about Lichtwerk, and then I go to the challenges for people with disabilities. Uh, in the open labor market and how we think we have a valuable answer through technology. So um, Lichtwerk is a spin-off of three non-profit organizations located in Belgium. Uh, first, there is Maria Steen. Maria Steen is one of the largest work uh, integration social enterprises in Belgium. We have more than 850 employees of which 700 with a disability and we focus on uh, metalworking and assembly, woodworking, groundskeeping, but we also have uh, in-company services in which people with disabilities or employees with disabilities uh, are working within the uh, regular companies. Then there is Group Gets. Uh, group Gets reaches more than 2,500 people with disabilities, supporting them in the domains of education and care. 
And then the third partner is Emino. And Emino is supporting and coaching employees, employers and job seekers in the open labor market. And they focus on vulnerable groups uh, such as people with disabilities. And together with those partners, we share innovation. We have it in our DNA and we create opportunities with and for people with disabilities. So we do that through employment, Maria Steen and Emino, Group Gets Education, CARE, and Lichtwerk is really focusing on technology. And not only technology as hard and software, but let's say a 360 approach in which we um, support the implementation of technology, both in social economy, uh, but also uh, in the open labor market. And we provide advice, um, we also, uh, deliver uh, the infrastructure and we provide training uh, and our mission and vision is go digital stay human so um, what are the challenges both in social economy and in the open labor market and um, i'm quite sure uh, you are quite known uh, with this challenge for example in the manufacturing industry if we look at the job jobs have become much more complex much more uh, difficult skills are required. Um, we see also when it comes to cereal production, lower volumes, uh, higher quality standards and much more variations. Uh, for example, lot size one uh, in uh, cereal production. And on the other hand, if you look at uh, the employees, we uh, often see what we call a decreasing employability. Uh, meaning that the employee not have not has the right skills to do the job or there is for example a language barrier um, or there is uh, a disability so how do you get it rebalanced if you look at the job and if you look at the employee because uh, a job is very important for people it's um, a sustainable, a safe, a meaningful, a paid job uh, on the other on the on the first hand, and on the other hand, uh, the employee with disabilities and the distance to the labor market. So, how do you get it rebalanced? That's the challenge. Um, and if we looked together with our partners on how to solve uh, uh, this challenge, we looked at a solution that could um, rapidly boost the learning curve of job seekers and employees, vulnerable employees. So really some kind of tooling uh, that makes it possible to um, immediately get some success uh, to, in a short period, uh, experience success as a job seeker or as an employee. Let me give just one example, for example, in the lighting industry, if you look at the assembly of design spots or upmarket lighting spots, it's still a manual process. It's done by, for example, people in work integration social enterprises, but also by employees in the open labor market. Um, and uh, this kind of assembly is quite complex because you have many variants, uh, you have small and medium series, long tag times, and because it's a design spot, um, quality standards are very high. So how can we support, uh, empower people with disabilities or a distance to the labor market uh, to really um, do this kind of complex manual process in, uh, in an excellent way? And the answer, or one of the answers, is innovation through technology. So instead of doing it in a manual assembly, um, we boost, we, we, we empower uh, companies to do it in a hybrid way. So a hybrid assembly, meaning that you empower the human potential via technology. And what kind of technology? Could be cobots or it could be augmented reality workstations. And today I will really focus on the augmented reality workstations. So cobots, I think most of you are familiar with that. Uh, cobots deliver some kind of physical operator support. Um, quite new is the kind of cognitive operator support. And cognitive operator support can be done via augmented reality or yet augmented reality workstations. And that is what we implement uh, in companies with Lichtwerk. Um, so that kind of augmented reality workstations, they use a lot of powerful methodologies to really um, support operators while they are executing complex manual processes. So those methodologies 
could be pick to light. So um, the light um, says what kind of uh, pieces, what kind of parts you need to pick in what amount. Um, we really could replace a lot of text with visual instructions, uh, movies, um, symbols. Could be done uh, for very small assemblies, but also for extra, extra large assemblies. Uh, very powerful. Um, operators get feedback when they do something wrong. They get, for example, a red light eh, and some help when they are performing or when they are doing the task good, they get a green light. Um, and by, let's say, this kind of hybrid assembly, we really have quality from the guidance of the technology and it can be used by multiple operators. So this is, let's say, how it works, but I can really show it uh, via a movie. And you can also see it on YouTube and I hope it works. And you can also see the captions of it. So it starts right now. Ja, dit is goed. Kijk, dat zie je altijd met dat groentzijtotje met dat winkje erin. Ja. Natasha monteert een onderdeel van het... Ik kan het horen, maar de video is niet... ...een blad de instructies uh, volgen. Het is dus geprojecteerd op het onderdeel zelf. Waar wat moet komen en wat ze moet doen. Als ze een fout maakt, brandt een rode lamp. Zo zit de stap voor... Even de video is niet uh, moving. We horen de tekst, maar we zien niet de film. Dus, so, um, let me... Switch back. Yeah. You can maybe close the sharing and try to share again. Yeah, but what I what I suggest is I will share the link via um, um, via the chat so everybody can see it uh, for him or herself. Uh, so the what the video is doing is showing is people with disabilities using the technology and they uh, say uh, how, in in what kind of matter it works for them. Uh, so. This kind of augmented reality workstations, they can be used for a lot of use cases. So not only, let's say, assembly, but also for, for example, inspection uh, or maintenance, uh, or even for uh, uh, a pilot series of, um, of prototypes uh, that are being made within a company for part kitting or sequencing, the assembly of wire harnesses, uh, but also for shipping and receiving goods. So, um, this kind of technology, this kind of smart assistive augmented reality workstations uh, can be used both as a kind of permanent operator support, but also as a kind of training tool uh, that is used when people uh, are getting to know how the complex assembly must be done uh, in a very good way. And they are used both in social economy, so in the work integration social enterprises, but also in the open labor market. Um, together with an academic partner, the University of Leuven in Belgium, we also perform the research on the impact of those augmented reality workstations on people with disabilities and people with a distance to the labor market. And so we focused on three things, productivity, quality, and quite unique, the operator well-being. So what's the impact of those augmented reality workstations and digital work instructions on operators? Well, when it comes to well-being, operators, so also operators with a distance to the labor market and operators with a disability, experience less stress and complexity. They really feel empowered by the technology and they also feel much more autonomous. They uh, are not depending anymore on the help uh, of a supervisor, but they can uh, do and execute complex processes uh, autonomously. And they also have uh, a very good uh, success feeling after doing it. Even sorry, you have one more minute. Okay. <laughs> so when it uh, comes to the return on investment for the employers, you see a very positive impact. Uh, on the quality of what is produced. So you really have a quality by guidance, which is very important uh, for companies. And if you look at the productivity, this kind of smart assistive technology has a very good impact on the efficiency and the agility of uh, the company's workspace as a whole. So uh, a short recap: when it comes to smart assistive manufacturing technology, 
the augmented reality workstations really increase access of people with disabilities to the labor market, both in social economy and in the open labor market. And uh, very important, it's not only about the technology, it's about the 360 approach, advice, infrastructure, <coughs> support. And so I'm very happy to, um, um, if you have any questions um, to answer them, you can visit our website, lichtwerk.io, or you can uh, uh, send me your questions via email. Thank you. Thank you very much, Levan. I'm um, sorry for the short time because uh, it's been, like Luke mentioned, it's uh, Lick Twerk is doing a great job in Flanders and uh, we invite all participants to, to check more in detail uh, exactly uh, how you operate. Um, so we would like to open uh, the floor for six minutes for questions. Um, anything that you might want to ask uh, any of your speakers or anything you'd like to learn about the project? I think we already have one question. Um, and I think that's something we can ask uh, our practitioners that we had on until now. So um, it will be, uh, maybe I'll start with you even, as uh, you still have your uh, mic on. Um, what do you think are the key factors for success of training of uh, adults with intellectual disability? Oh, I would certainly say that you need to involve uh, them from the beginning. It's really a bottom-up approach. Um, uh, so really uh, with them uh, and for them. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, Raf, if you're still there, what, uh, what is your perspective on this? So what do you think are the key factors for success of training adults with intellectual disability? Um, there are uh, a few keys. Um, is um, the, the staff uh, teach the teachers the, in, in education, so they, they're familiar with working with people with an intellectual disability. We see that gives a lot of uh, possibilities for people without disability as well. And another key factor is where uh, aspect uh, the co-students, the, 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 the other students in, in the group, uh, who followed the same course, we, we saw them taking care for each other and I think that was a big uh, key factor to success why, why this, uh, this worked. Indeed, thank you. Thank you very much. And the co-production type of approach is, is uh, essential in achieving success. Everybody should be involved. Persons with disabilities should have a voice in it and um, stakeholders uh, should be involved. Different stakeholders should be involved at different levels to, to achieve success. Um, I think with, uh, with uh, these messages, we can, uh, as I see that we don't have any questions at this stage anymore, I think we can slowly but surely transition into the policy panel. Um, who will be, which will be moderated by the Secretary General of the SPD, Luz Alderol. So I would like to give you the floor. Thank you, uh, Adriana, and thank you for sharing this uh, this first panel in such an uh, effective uh, effective way. Uh, it is not always easy um, these online events, but. Uh, uh, everything is going very, very well. So congratulations for that. I also would like to thank uh, all the presenters. Uh, it is uh, very, very important and, and, and top quality information that you shared with us. Uh, very, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, in, in the last part of this, uh, this event, we will have a, a policy uh, discussion. A discussion where we together will try to explore a bit um, how can we how can we improve things? What, what should be done at European or at national or at local level to make sure that indeed uh, adult education uh, practitioners are empowered to do what they have to do and that is uh, supporting persons with a disability in a uh, more effective and in an inclusive uh, way. To have this discussion, uh, we have, I think, uh, a very interesting panel. Uh, we have with us uh, the representative of the European uh, Lifelong Learning Platform. Thank you for joining us, uh, Anja. It is, it is great to have you with us. We have two uh, adult education practitioners, 
and we have a representative of the uh, European Commission, uh, DG um, um, Education uh, and uh, Sports and Culture. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it is good to have the different perspectives uh, at the table when starting this uh, debate. During this uh, project, um, a manifesto was produced. The ESPD did that in close cooperation uh, with the partners. And in this manifesto, we tried to capture the key issues uh, at stake when uh, looking into um, adult education uh, to indeed facilitate uh, inclusive uh, VET, inclusive uh, adult learning for persons with support needs. This manifesto was developed uh, together with the partners and uh, it was also uh, discussed with uh, persons with disabilities in Romania, Greece and Spain to make sure that we indeed have this uh, co-production um, type of approach when working on the uh, manifesto. Um, the manifesto is, is based on, on uh, an observation of the researchers that inclusive education, inclusive adult education and, and VET for persons with a disability is far from achieved. We still have a way to segregating systems if we want to uh, further promote uh, inclusive uh, education for uh, these persons with uh, support needs. And that is maybe the starting point that we never should forget. Uh, inclusive uh, education, inclusive um, uh, education and training is absolutely essential if we want persons with support needs to become uh, correctly included in society and in the labor market. And that is uh, still something we have to work on a lot and I really look forward to hear the uh, contribution from the representative of the uh, Commission to, to share with us ideas on how uh, also at European level we can uh, work on that. Looking at the data we see that uh, persons with, uh, with disabilities um, participate in VET and in adult training programs much less than their peers. Uh, only one out of 10 of the persons with disabilities are enrolled in these type of programs where uh, the participation, there is a sort of an echo. Uh, uh, it's over. Okay. You can still hear me correctly. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, so there is, there is a, a real uh, discrimination uh, there and we should uh, tackle that. Uh, also essential is looking it into the uh, adequate training for uh, education practitioners, because if they are not well prepared, if they are not skilled to do the job, then of course it is uh, very difficult. And we see that uh, also when it comes to providing tailor-made solutions, uh, because that is what is needed uh, for uh, adults with, uh, uh, with support needs. Uh, looking at these tailor-made solutions, individualized uh, resources also there, we have to make progress, uh, we think. In this manifesto, we, uh, we, well, we can summarize the manifesto and it is available online and I'm sure that Adriana will provide you the link in a second. Um, we, we see four key messages. And the first key message is, and that is always the starting point, we need a clear vision, a clear policy uh, vision and commitment to make sure that uh, all related policies follow in, their, in the same direction. Uh, and uh, we also hope to together with the European Union uh, and the European Union institutions to further develop uh, this uh, vision. The second message is that uh, skilled adult education um, trainers uh, workforce is needed if we want indeed high quality education. So we have to focus on the workforce, the trainers, the support staff, the, 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 the uh, job coaches and so on. We have to make sure that they are well equipped uh, and that they have the needed uh, tools and uh, material uh, available, which is the third, uh, the third key message. These practitioners need adequate material and flexible educational environments to do uh, their uh, job. Last key message is co-production. 
we have to asset by uh, Raf and, and by Leven uh, and by the different speakers in their presentations uh, during the first uh, panel. Uh, we really have to involve all stakeholders, starting with the persons with disabilities uh, themselves. And only if we involve all the actors, uh, what we develop will work and will indeed do what it has to do. You can read this uh, manifesto uh, following uh, the link and I really hope to have from the different uh, panelists now uh, also their views on this manifesto, on the key messages and on um, uh, how they see uh, the, the next steps uh, to make at European level or at no local and uh, regional level. And that brings me to the first speaker. Let's go from uh, Brussels to Vienna online, it's just uh, uh, a, a small step. Uh, what is the perspective of uh, the lifelong learning platform on what we have on the table uh, here today? Uh, Anja, you have the, the floor. Thank you very much, Luke. I hope you can hear me well. Yes. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and uh, try to... Um, you're aware that you have around seven minutes, huh? Yes. Good. Yes, there we go. Um, yeah, I mean, the panel is under the, um, under the heading of Together We Can Do More in adult Education uh, for Adult Education Practitioners. I must say I was very, very, very impressed uh, by uh, the different presentations and uh, the different projects. But uh, let me uh, first uh, just say briefly what the um, lifelong learning platform is about and who we are and what we do. Um, we are a, a platform, as the name says, of uh, 42 European networks, uh, civil society organizations active in the field of education. And we cover um, more than 50,000 education and training institutions, of course, also in the field um, of um, adult uh, education and learning. You can see here uh, the different um, stakeholders uh, that we are representing. So, of course, we also here have the practitioners, which I've highlighted. But, of course, we also have the learners, educators, teachers, parents, and so on. Um, when we come to the three main um, objectives, um, you can see, and I've highlighted as well, building inclusive and democratic education systems is one of our aims. So um, this falls very much in line with uh, the projects that you have been presenting today, and uh, as well as educa uh, adult education and uh, vocational education and trainings, uh, both things have been mentioned by you. Here you have all our members um, and uh, you will recognize certain um, um, logos. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, in the upper right hand corner you have the uh, European um, Association for the Education of Adults, but uh, many others as well that are active in this sector. Now, um, lifelong learning um, was mentioned several times today um, and we have seen it also in the presentations in the video um, especially in the first one um, we could see the retraining um, of um, uh, different people so uh, lifelong learning is a concept that is still not anchored um, in everybody's minds um, this is something that the platform is really working on what we're also working on is um, to have um, all the different forms of uh, learning recognized uh, from the informal, the formal and the non-formal learning. And uh, you can see here, I have also uh, interjected these, um, um, the issue of peer learning and intergenerational learning. Um, all these things were mentioned um, in the presentations today. Um, when we come into this world, uh, the first way we learn is very informal in our families, then we go to formal settings, but also the non-formal learning uh, plays a very important part. And we, I think, uh, um, especially when you mentioned the soft skills today, um, that was very evident as well. So um, how do we learn? Um, well, everything starts with curiosity. Um, we want to know something. We want to know how to do something. That also gives us motivation. 
Um, but then there are obstacles, there are barriers uh, for different people in different ways. And um, how do we overcome uh, these obstacles? And uh, here you have the little flash on, on the right hand side. It's by support. Um, and uh, eventually, um, if the support helps us to overcome these obstacles, um, what we actually want to see is that the obstacles go away. Yeah? And that is when what we mean when we talk about inclusion. Because as we have seen today in, in, the, in the different presentations, um, and I'm going to show you um, this slide here, what we want is for everyone to develop her or his full and unique potential and be valued for his or her achievements. Well, this is something we want for everybody. Um, it's not a matter of uh, having a disability, coming from a migrant background, uh, coming from a different socioeconomic background. This is something we want for all people. Yeah? Also to live a self-determined, happy life and get the support that people need to do so. But we want people to reach their goals and fulfill their dreams. That's also true for everybody. So if we talk about inclusion, we actually talk about a mind shift. And what we appreciate so much about your project is um, the learner-centered approach, the bottom-up approach that has been mentioned in uh, different um, um, uh, presentations, that it's based on the multiple intelligences as uh, presented by Howard Gardner. We are advocating for this to be implemented in all learning, in all education systems. And um, we also found very interesting um, the four phases of the project, um, starting by empathy, the problem definition, ideation, and creating a prototype. I think that these are um, elements that we need in all education. We need that for all children, not only for children with disabilities or adults with disabilities. So I was really very impressed by um, um, the, uh, especially the last presentation today, um, how to include the technology. We know that the digital device, um, the digital um, um, uh, divide um, has uh, increased with the pandemic that um, people had access to um, computers, um, good internet connection and so on, um, were privileged in comparison to others. But I think this last uh, presentation has shown so very clearly how technology can actually um, make um, profitable for all learners, um, including um, not only persons with disabilities, but also people from a migrant background, people who do not speak uh, the language of the country they are living in so well. Um, I think that that can be very helpful and that needs to promote, be promoted a lot more um, to make people understand that it is not only about inclusion of people with disabilities, but that we are talking about an inclusive society yes, and that, uh, that we need these elements and examples everywhere um, that it's too short-sighted, I think, to, to target just one specific group, but that we really need people to un make them understand that yep. this is needed for everybody. And um, the, can Indeed. you can be sure that you Indeed. have the support of the Lifelong Learning Platform um, for promoting that message and um, uh, also for um, disseminating uh, the great results. Um, I've also had a look at the manual. I mean, it's very impressive because it's more than 400 pages, um, but I think- Can that, you that, close uh, slowly? Yes, uh, and, you know, we have yes. To um, so um, I, I think that the findings that you have there, the key messages that are in there, um, they are valid for everybody. And uh, we look forward uh, to sharing that with, uh, with everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, dear Vice President of the Lifelong Learning Platform. It was a pleasure and an honor to have you with us here. Thank you for your contribution. From a European platform perspective, we would like to go to, uh, to the perspective of the practitioners. And uh, it is with pleasure that I uh, 
hand over again to, to Raf uh, Hensbergen, who will uh, share with us his views on uh, how we should support the people working in, in this field uh, in, in a more efficient, in a more effective way. Raf, uh, you have the floor for, let's say, around seven minutes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't have another presentation, so I'll imagine just things and I'll tell you my, my ideas about stuff. Um, in, uh, in the story Aria told, I can give, I can give some examples from out of the working field. I told you the story about Franz who was uh, taking a course to uh, repair bicycles. Um, the, the teacher of that course, um, he worked with him and thought uh, about the curriculum he, he was using um, and the tips. Uh, for instance, Franz cannot read, so he had to, to work very visual in, in the learning materials he, he used, but then he made the reflex that he can use that for all the other students. He, he realized that actually his course he was giving was maybe much too difficult to, to be really useful. So working with people with disabilities in these courses gives an inspiration to the people in uh, the, the, the courses who are giving these courses as well. Another thing that I noticed in this project is the, the barriers that there are um, with the people with disabilities themselves. Um, there's a lot of options, there's a lot of things you can do, but they're not used to think that, okay, if I want to be uh, uh, working in a restaurant, I can follow a course to be a cook, or I can, I can be practical anything. We, uh, Want. They're, they're not used to thinking like that. If we ask them to, would you, for this project, would you would like to follow a course? They, they, they did not um, know that there was those options, so that's, that was new for them as well. And if they, uh, I talk, talk with them now afterwards, the, the, the honors, the, the, the feelings they have by following in this course, um, it's, it's something big in their lives. They're, they're talking about it all of the time. When they meet other people, they're, the first thing they tell is, um, I work there or there or there, and I follow the course in, 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 in high school or in university, and that's something special in their lives um, that, that, that gives them something more to, to, to believe in themselves as well. Um, and matching those two things together the teachers they are learning okay we can learn stuff from the people with disabilities in our courses and the people with the disabilities they are learning themselves okay i have other options i can do a lot of things that that give something very um, fun to work with because in, in my profession i am i'm a job coach normally i work with people who want to go to work and learning is, is a part of that but uh, i learned that I'm used to working with the, the, the method of support and employment, but we can use that as well in, in education, uh, supported education, and then the same principles we use in supported employment, uh, we can use that in, in, in education as well. Some people, they need some support, um, some people, they need some assistance the first day when they go to school or go to work, but afterwards, I noticed we we can um, define this, this, uh, this support and they need less and less and less support and they get more and more um, independent in, in following those courses and, and just like in a working place where the colleagues learn to work together with a person with a disability, those students also learn how it is to learn together with these people with, with a disability and how they can cooperate and um, Maybe the quality of the course is even going up by implementing someone with a disability. And there at first there's the fear that, oh no, people with a disability, they're going to follow the same course as us, so the quality is going down and uh, it will all go slower and stuff like that. But in reality, that's not uh, the case. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Ra, for this very clear uh, statement and position. Again, I think a very strong call for uh, co-production, for stakeholder cooperation. As we see in the chat box, uh, uh, Arya also made the, the point that uh, also the, the, the inclusion of parents is very important. Parents should be part of this. That is absolutely uh, correct, of course. Uh, and last element you made is, I think, absolutely essential. Bringing persons with support needs, persons with disabilities in, not only as trainees, but also as trainers, 
can have a very powerful effect in developing this type of material. So that is, I think, also a very uh, useful message. Let's go from Belgium to Spain. Judith, uh, how do you think, how can we improve the support uh, that, is, uh, that is provided to, to education practitioners and vet uh, providers? Uh, you have the floor, Judith. Hello, everyone. And um, let me share my screen. Okay. So thank you very much to invite me to participate in this webinar. So my name is Judith Rufi and I am the head of training at the Adult Training Center Lopon. We only see an empty page. Yeah, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, oh, yeah. it comes and goes. Ah, yeah. No. Yes, okay. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay perfect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so let me briefly introduce my organization. So, and Lopon is an integrated center that we provide both adult education and vocational education, vocational education services, and both formal and non formal training. So we work um, in order to our students achieve either the return to formal education system or facilitating access to employment. Our target group are young people aged between 16 and 24 years old who often suffer risk of exclusion and 20% of them has an intellectual disabilities or special needs. So we work and to promote inclusion and equal opportunities for all youngsters facing social and context disadvantages. So and we, I would like to share and the different factors that we base our experience to contribute and improve uh, the trainings and education for persons with disabilities. The first um, case and uh, success factor is that we use person-centered methodology and we designed a specific professional projects for each student in accordance with their motivations, what they like, what they want to be in the future, and their skills, not the academic ones, when we give a lot of importance with with two of the soft skills and with the context because the family structures or what there are the condition of the area what they what he or she lives and they needs because so more of so often the needs and the motivations differ so it's a point that we have to work especially and a second key and a second factor is the accompaniment of the students by a tutor. Throughout all the learning process and up to minimum of four months later, the students are accompanied and have the support of a tutor. So it, we have paid more attention to the accompaniment from the tutor. Another key, another success factor um, are the practices. Our practices are replicational, replicable and educational. The ground methodology of our training process is work by a project. We use work by a project as a key tool to develop the necessary competencies. All projects are based in real aspects related to the job place uh, or different aspects in their common life. So this methodology is characterized but it is flexible and adapted, and adapted because it takes into account the needs of each of the students. So it responds to the, uh, the diversity that exists in the classroom. And it allows different profiles of youngsters to work together in the same project. And thanks to this peer-to-peer -peer approach, we increase inclusion. The first success factor is ensuring personalized intervention strategies for each student. For do that, we create a commission called Diversity Commission. This commission works to ensure that all youngsters, especially the youngsters with more needs, can carry out projects and trainings appropriately. It also develops strategies to approach them to the community and promote and ensure inclusion. It also provides orientation and support on inclusion to the staff. The work developed by the commission is based on taking in consideration the individual interest and motivation of the youngsters 
applying more intensity in the accompanying process, considering the family as a basic social unit of, inter of intervention, paying special attention to emotional education and the socialization process, and being flexible with different needs and contexts. The fifth success factor is how we reach the young people. In our case, we live in a, area, in a rural area in the south of Catalonia that it is called Terres de Lebre. And our territory is characterized because it has a low population density and public transportation is scarce and the area is poorly communicated. So the model that mm, we use to face this territorial dispersion and promote equity is, is a decentralized model. So that it means that we have established different headquarters of our training center in different uh, sub-regions to have better accessibility to the young people. Another one uh, success case is the, is the strong network. In order to address the dispersion mentioned before, it's necessary to build a strong network with different agents in the territory. And one so, more minute, is that okay, Judith? Yeah. So we use uh, local resources to build and develop a good need around the student. The network also contributes the recruitment and the derivation of young people to our services and promote their involvement in the community. And the last but not least, um, it's uh, we have a multidisciplinary team. We believe that a multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary team with a wide range of working areas, intervention methodologies, and competencies are necessary. And finally, I would, I would to like to mention a one big challenge that the COVID pandemic, COVID pandemic has brought and difficulty the access to vet training and adult education for persons with disabilities. This pandemic has been has made visible that organizations are not sufficiently prepared for digital work. This is the, there is a digital divide between young people with adults because sometimes we are talking in some, we are talking with different languages. Young people with several resources cannot access in digital environments, and support services need to improve support provided to young people with special needs and disabilities to access in digital environment. So the challenge is that we face is how to educate and accompany the digitalization, especially with the young people who have more needs and less resources. So thank you very much for your attention. And thank you, Judith. Thank you for your very comprehensive uh, presentation. And uh, Adriana, can you please uh, um, ensure and maybe put a message in the chat box that all the presentations will be made available to all the participants? I see you nodding, so that is that is Indeed. great news. Okay, thank you. Uh, Judith, can you stop uh, sharing your screen yeah. maybe? Thank you. Uh, thank you. And now yeah. <laughs> it's a, a real pleasure uh, for me to, to hand over to uh, Madame Mal Malgorodza uh, Kozak, uh, who is representing the European uh, Commission uh, here uh, with us uh, today, DG Employment, uh, no, sorry, DG Education, Youth Sports and Culture. Uh, it is a great honor to have you here with us um, and uh, we really are interested in, in hearing your perspectives on what we have on the table here, the debate, and maybe even more important what DG uh, um, uh, Education can do uh, to support uh, the ambition of this type of projects. Uh, dear Madame Kozak, you have the floor. Uh, yes, hello, thank you very much. Uh, the first element I would like to highlight it is uh, actually that uh, it has been uh, a lot done on your part, I mean on uh, the stakeholder parts and the Erasmus Plus uh, beneficiaries, because the events uh, like, like today uh, actually highly contribute to the further dissemination and communication uh, uh, about the results. Um, and the communication and dissemination is actually a key factor to uh, to boost and to reinforce the, the possibilities uh, for, um, uh, for education and training for the both sector, adult education and vocational education and training. Uh, so indeed, we have um, 
uh, quite a lot already in hand. There is a lot of uh, excellent stakeholders like lifelong learning platforms uh, together with its member uh, where uh, a lot of things um, have been already done. Uh, but of course we need to, to further build up the, the importance and the, and the maturity of the sector. So the dialogue uh, between the institutions and the key stakeholders and uh, Erasmus plus beneficiaries is, is, um, is very important. Um, of course, what the Commission can do to support the, um, the adult education and the vocational education and trainings uh, recently, we have delivered um, packages uh, that uh, that are really in the heart uh, of these uh, hot topics recently, like the European Skills Agenda, and we will communicate soon on the European Education Area when the lifelong learning perspective should become the norm. And in terms of the available opportunities and funding possibilities, um, the European Commission and in particular DGEAC um, in response to the COVID crisis uh, two additional calls for the strategic partnerships uh, have been published. The deadline is 29 of October and the active um, organizations in the VET field can apply for the digital uh, readiness uh, projects proposed and for adult education uh, we can offer the additional um, funds for the culture and creativity so that is what i would say that the most important element is uh, to um, to keep going and to keep further the, the communication and the constructive dialogues be, between us and also, the, in terms of the Erasmus Plus beneficiaries, I would like to uh, highlight that it's very important to organize uh, as wide as possible these kind events uh, of events, especially within the strategic partnership projects like the multiplier events. More audience we reach, uh, better it is, and of course the results uh, should be further disseminated. We have a lot of excellent results, which sometimes uh, land, unfortunately, the, in the drawers, uh, but could be further uh, used. So, thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Madam uh, Kozak. Maybe, maybe once more question uh, for you. Uh, yes. At this stage, at European level, we are debating a uh, child guarantee. Um, protection package for, for children. Of course, we are discussing adult education here, but do you see uh, important opportunities there to further promote also the, the quality of the education uh, provide for young adult, provided to young adults with support needs? Do you see possible links there? Uh, yes, yes, indeed. It is, um, uh, of course, the, 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 the political priorities focus very much on the inclusive uh, and high quality of uh, education for all, irrespective uh, of, the, of the age. Uh, so generally, everyone should have an access to the quality um, education, irrespective uh, of the age. And uh, of course, the... Um, uh, the further developments will, in a sense, shape and direct more uh, where, where more resources and funds and uh, more um, policy debates should be, should be put forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you uh, for that. And uh, it is also a call to all the partners and, and the participants here. Uh, indeed, at this stage, uh, important discussions are uh, being organized by the European institutions on this child guarantee and the further development of, of the support services and systems around children and families. It is important that, uh, that we are all involved in that to make sure that uh, children with support needs, adults with support needs are not forgotten uh, in, this, in this process. We, we slowly have to wrap up, but I would like to give uh, the floor again to the different panelists for very brief, your one key 
uh, important message to the European institutions to make sure that we build a more inclusive adult education uh, system, uh, including also uh, persons with support needs. Let's let's maybe first go to the European uh, uh, platform. Uh, Arnia, your your one key message to the European policymakers. What would that be? Thank you very much, Luke. Um, well, my one message would be to not concentrate the inclusiveness only on certain vulnerable groups. What we see at the moment uh, in the child guarantee, but also in other strategies, is that certain groups are mentioned. And I'm always afraid that if we put people into boxes, that some people will not fall, fit into the boxes and they will fall out. Mm -hmm. So what I really think is when we talk about inclusiveness, and that this is why I love uh, your, uh, the title of your project, the all in, um, because it really means everybody in, um, not putting people into boxes, but to tackle people Clear. as individuals. I think that's the you. very important message that I would like to deliver. And I take Thank one you. away from, um, from uh, um, uh, Leuven today, who said, go digital and stay human. I think that is a very key point as well. So thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Raf, what would be your key recommendation to the policymakers here in Brussels to make sure that adult education is becoming more inclusive and more effective also for people with support needs? Um, I would advise to think about co-creation and involve the themselves in making this uh, policy involve those groups that Arja is talking about um, and listen to their story and make a tailor-made something that can fit in everyone or um, all in uh, what's all about here. So co-creation, I think that's the one. Co-creation. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Judith. Um, in my opinion, I think that it's important that the community that the, where the, the children live or the adult, adult people with disabilities live um, involved in the process of the, the learning. So um, we think that not always we are learning in all in the center. We are learning in all or in all the streets in the in the all time that we are. So it's important factor that the, the community, for example, the, the, the agents in different community like and councils or, or social services involved in this process and in, the, in this learning process. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Malgorat, I can say, I can say uh, your, your first name. Yes, that's okay. Uh, what is the message that you will take with you from this, uh, from this event? Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, all, all, all the um, speakers and also the dedicated uh, uh, people uh, we could hear uh, today, the excellent job they do for the um, everyday life. Uh, when I discuss that internally with my colleagues, I am sure that they would be very impressed uh, by that. And also the, the key message uh, I take um, with me, it is important what Anya said about the inclusion and also uh, what, um, uh, what uh, was said uh, by um, these two persons, I'm sorry, I don't remember the names from Belgium, uh, yep. practitioners, adult education practitioners and from Spain. It is, it is indeed very, very important for us to further discuss, especially when it comes to the implement, the design and the implementation of the future Erasmus Plus program. Thank you very much uh, for this. Uh, uh, on behalf of the project partnership, I would like to thank uh, all panelists of this uh, policy uh, uh, panel. Uh, I would like to, to remind you that uh, we have indeed, and Adriana gave an overview of that top class material uh, available here, so please feel free to, uh, to dive into it and to enjoy reading it and to, to use it in your own organization or in your own uh, support uh, service. Um, there are many more projects looking into this and uh, we have seen a few models of good practice, so I also invite you to look into the work that these, uh, 
these uh, people um, introduced here. And I'm sure that also other organizations have many uh, models of good practice uh, in their in their day-to-day -day, uh, service provision or educational system. Uh, that is why organizations such as ESPD are important. We try to collect these type of models of good practice and to spread them. Uh, we try to make islands of excellence a sort of a, a common practice in the field, in the sector. So uh, feel free to also visit our, our website and to to join the different uh, project groups and task forces that we have. Uh, the policy message, I think, is clear and you can check the, the manifesto and spread it. Uh, please spread it. Persons with disabilities should be uh, involved as key actors, not only as trainees, but also as trainers, stakeholders, co-productions, absolutely essential. And we hope that authorities will uh, help us to uh, create more inclusive educational systems and uh, clear equal access to, uh, to VET also for people with support needs. Uh, we have to work on that uh, together. Uh, dear partners, project partners, thank you very much for the interesting uh, journey uh, we uh, we had together thank you again uh, adriana for organizing everything in such an uh, efficient and professional way and uh, dear participants take the messages uh, with you and keep on doing the right thing also in times of covid 19 uh, this uh, pandemic should not stop us doing what we have to do and that is uh, to work together on a more inclusive uh, society a more inclusive labor market all the best to all of you and uh, see you later bye bye